This week we're going to talk about clenbuterol and salbutamol. They are basically exactly the same. They both are bronchodilators. They increase the temperature in your body, so they produce thermogenesis. They both attach to the adrenaline receptor, which produce lipolysis. They are both anabolics. During the last five years, there have been a lot of studies sponsored by the Olympic Committee showing that salbutamol increased not only the power, muscle power, but also muscle mass in elite athletes. Also, it increased the, it decreased the time in these sprinters because it, it, it speeds up the recirculation of lactic acid. So lactic acid can be converted back into glucose immediately. And of course, more glucose gives you more explosive power. Based on these studies, the, the Olympic Committee have banned salbutamol just five years ago. So what is the difference between these two drugs? Basically, it's just the half-life. The half-life of clenbuterol is between 9 and 12 hours, which means that the active life is the half-life times 5, 60 hours for clenbuterol, so you can feel the effects for 60 hours. Salbutamol has a half-life of between 3 and 4 hours, so the total life is almost 20 hours. And that is a big difference. All the studies conducted in rats using clenbuterol show that the rats develop scar tissue in the heart. And that is the reason why it's been more than 50 years and clenbuterol was never approved by the FDA. Clenbuterol was produced, was released in 1967. So it's been almost 60 years. And it was never approved by the FDA because the rats developed atrial fibrillation, which is a scar tissue in the heart. It was approved in the 90s just for use in horses. And that actually confirmed this heart issue, but also point out another issue, that clenbuterol decreased the potassium levels. And because of this, the horses were dying of heart attacks. Salbutamol proved to be safe. All the studies conducted in rats, none of them show this issue of atrial fibrillation. Salbutamol decreased potassium levels, but not to the same extent as clenbuterol. And that is the reason why salbutamol was approved by FDA, but not clenbuterol. Also, because of this long half-life, clenbuterol desensitized the receptor. So after a few weeks, you don't feel any effects. And that is the reason why athletes need to take ketotifen or Benadryl or any antihistamine to try to increase the sensitivity of the receptor again. With salbutamol, you don't have this issue. Due to the short half-life, the receptor has time to recover between dosage. So, you don't need to use these antihist antihistaminics to recover the receptor. Now, based on all this evidence, salbutamol is a lot safer than clenbuterol and is actually more effective than clenbuterol. Now, 
in the 80s, the FDA approved the use of the inhalers, right? The sprays. Now that's a different story because these inhalers are specific for the receptors in the lungs. So basically they are only bronchodilators. They don't have a big effect on the other receptors that control the fat burning or the thermogenesis. And based on that, the salutable pills, salutable tablets, were removed from the market because the objective was to have just a bronchodilator, right? Not a drug with a systemic effect. However, in many countries, you can still get salbutamol in any pharmacy. Salbutamol tablets in any pharmacy is actually considered by the by the World Health Organization as one of the basic drugs that any health system should have. Right? Now, what we use before salbutamol or clenbuterol were in the market. The treatment for people with asthma was actually coca drops. The benzoleconine in coca attached to the same receptors is also a bronchodilator and also attached to the adrenaline receptor producing lipolysis. However, it has 10 times more affinity for both receptors. So actually, it was a better bronchodilator and a better fat burden. The reason why it was banned is because the pharmaceutical companies didn't want competition. They needed to ban the coca drops that were used for almost 200 years before in order to release salbutamol and clenbuterol into the market. So in countries like Peru, my country, athletes still chew coca leaf because it has a more potent effect and nobody has ever died of atrial fibrillation due to chewing coca leaf. But that's the topic for another video. See you next week.